to go even further beyond! Yes, sir. My name is Akashi, and in this video here, we got a very, very controversial video. We're going to be discussing who the best unit in Dragon Ball Legends is. This is not a tier list. This is not a list of ordering. It's just, it's just who's the best? Who's the best? It's first, nobody else matters. Who is the best? That's all that matters. We're here, we're here, I'm starting because it's crazy. We're here to decide who the best Dragon Ball Legends unit is right now, 4th anniversary edition. Let's get into it, man. We're going to have a good time in this video. I'm going to break down everything and I'm going to give my opinion, objectively speaking, facts. And there's nothing here you're going to be able to dispute. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this video. If you haven't already, make sure to press that subscribe button. We are on this grind to 30,000 subscribers. All my social media links are going to be on the bottom of the screen. This is the YouTube channel. We've got a Twitter, Twitch, Reddit, Instagram, and a Discord link all in the description below. You guys should enjoy this video, but of course, be sure to live, leave your opinion in the comment section below. Nothing else matters more than your opinion because whatever you do with the game is how you're going to have fun with the game. But I'm just here to give what I think, but I'm telling you it's objectively right. <laughs> That's satire, but let's get into it, man. So, for the contenders of this video i'm putting it up straight like this it's going to be based on the meta it just has to be um i feel like that makes sense because it's the fourth anniversary edition so it's not like kits just age over time people do get power crept but we have to do it based on the meta of course and i'm going to list out contenders that i just feel like are at the top and then i'm going to minimize it as we go down and then when we get into our quote-unquote finalists i'm going to give descriptions on why a certain person or certain characters are better than other characters and that will be the finals for the video so for the contenders that i have in this video the first contender we have is ultra super gogia the second contender we have is ultra super saiyan blue kaioken goku the third contender we have is lf mastered ultra instinct goku the fourth contender we have are the tag androids android 17 and 18 the red unit the fifth contender we have is the Zenkai himself, the king of the hill in the second anniversary, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan LF Vegito. He has made the list and I've got a sixth one because people are going to want to put him there. The sixth contender is going to be the Blue Bros themselves, Goku and Vegeta Blue, the LF unit during the festival. So now due to unforeseen circumstances of um, Bandai actually not releasing content, we actually can't have Vegito Blue in this video because his Zenkai has not even arrived. However, I will be including him in a future video, updating the results on this video and giving him his placement on where he stands in the mail because he's the king of the hill, man. Come on, man, let's be honest. But also, just to get straight into it, there's a couple people I just have to knock off straight away because I had to just include some people to just make some people happy so they can smile and whatnot. Just simple as that. I feel like <laughs> somebody's watching the video like, oh, he put my unit on the list. He put my unit on the contenders. Like they're probably just there so you could be smiling for now. But honestly, I feel like it's quite clear cut who are the best units in the game and at that, the best unit in the game. So just getting straight into it, a unit that I probably should have mentioned is Cell, but he's not number one so it doesn't matter anyways blue bros time your time has come you had a good run in mono purple and whatever but your time has come you're not making number one either let's just be honest uh you're still amazing i'm not going to lie but you're not topping the remaining units on the list already kicked off vigio blue simply because <laughs> he can't be here due to unforeseen circumstances of content so that leaves us with four units we got kaioken gogeta MUI, Android 17, and 18. So just to make it easier, I'm just gonna work in backwards order. And as I tick people off, I'm just gonna explain what they have. And then as I go along, you'd see why each person has more value than the person before. So the first person I'm just gonna mention is the Super Saiyan Blue Kaoken Goku. He's gonna go fourth in my opinion, simply because even though he's great right now, the meta doesn't support him. He's yellow for one, and I'm not gonna base it off colors because that's stupid, right? But just him being yellow actually just forces him out by default. 
yellows are less valuable right now specifically because everybody's running MUI. That's unfortunate and it also doesn't help that androids are actually red as well. So he's already forced out by an element. But if we're basing it off kit, it still also doesn't matter because he strike locks, right? But what's the point of the strike lock if I can just stand still for that time period with MUI Goku? Even if you've got a blue card, like if I just vanish that, I can still stand still because you're not going to have a double blue card. In that case, it's very, very tough. And the only other comparison I can make with him would be to Super Gogeta. And I feel like in terms of straight utility and ease of use, Gogeta just negs Kao Ken. People often think about it at the peak of their potential. And I feel like even at the peak, Blast Armor is such an overpowered thing to have that USG just has on his strike cards, which puts it over, um, puts him over um, Kyle Ken. That's just my take on it. And I feel like Blast Armor is probably the most underrated mechanic in the game. But literally, it gives you an extra attacking option, which is just outplaying so many people in so many situations. On top of the fact that USG goes type neutral, um, two ultimate arts only guy in the game to do that the amount of power he's going to be applying <laughs> against his enemies is nuts kyle ken he will still be doing that but over a longer period of time and i feel like that's less valuable simply because the longer the combo is taking longer for him to do that same amount of damage you can probably just switch and spread out the damage where usg is most likely to kill you especially if it's 2v3 you're locked in so that's not to say Kyle Ken's bad and nobody on this list I've even mentioned is at all bad. But I feel like that sm these small edges here keeps Kyle Ken at fourth for me. Let me know you guys' thoughts on that. But that's not to say that he can't overpower USG in certain scenarios or anything like that. Or even anybody else on this list. Just want to state that for how I see it, he's just not better than anybody else above this above on the list right now, if, if anything. Alright, so we've got three units left, right? And... <laughs> This one's going to be very tight, but I feel the next one i got to mention, and people might disagree, but it's got to be MUI Goku. I'm putting MUI Goku third, right? MUI Goku, I put him at third simply because it, it's based on the player. It's a very difficult thing to measure, and if you get a bad MUI player, it's going to be the easiest food you probably collect in your life. If you get a good one, it's the peak of legends which you're not going to be able to counter and that's a very difficult thing to measure but if we just take everything else in this kit it's quite brain dead i'm not going to lie Hit winning every clash except pretty much muis is already insane like that is a big nuts factor having the dodge and then dealing damage as a result of them uh, using a blast or strike cards against your dodge is insane building up your gauge through strikes and blast arts and green cards is also insane so you pretty much always have it as long as you've got priority there's so many factors that make him OP, but at the same time, he lacks factors of disruption. So he is great offensively, but he also forces passive play. And in a lot of situations, passive play is not going to help you in a battle. A lot of cases. And a lot of the time, you have to really learn to be passive. And a lot of players are not that, especially with the patience games. Like, it really shows the edge between the top players and the bottom players. So... I can't just measure him in the hands of the best players because that isn't necessarily beneficial for everybody in that sense. It doesn't even represent the whole player base. But that doesn't make his kit any less worse than anybody above or below. It's just very difficult to measure. So I could also understand if people think he's the best in the game. I could also understand if people put him even lower than some people before. But at the same time, he has so many things in his kit in comparison to, for example, UI Cyan, where he's just much easier to use and will actually guide you to a win so simply but at the same time he's just not that fighting force that's going to make you feel like yeah this is the greatest unit of all time and i feel like that's a fair judgment especially considering i do have him 14 stars as well and that's from my experience of using him um just have to put it out like that i don't have much more to say than that but he will definitely guide you to win just because he's it's like playing uh, a shooting game with auto aim that's how it is playing with mui and legends he's literally gonna assist you in every single play so we're down to our final contestants we've got the lf the android 17 and 18 the tag unit and then on the right here we got ultra super go gr and it's been very very difficult for me to make this conclusion but 
bear in mind this is un this is unbiased unbiased it's very unbiased i have to give the edge to the androids i have to i have to i feel like i'd be biased to not do so but considering i'm basing it off the metal i feel like i have a good reason for that so one thing i very much noticed recently is that the androids are still in the feature boost and i feel like that's a factor that has to be taken into account so in most scenarios the androids are just going to edge over usg but i feel like usg in terms of just being a brain dead kit that's going to lead you to victory in the hands of even a bad player he has that vibe of vigito blue in the second anniversary like if you didn't have him at his peak you're gonna struggle U usg has that same ability however these androids just have everything else they have everything else <laughs> everything else the switch they have healing they'll take your vanish you can't cover change them like and the damage being built up they nullify endurance those factors all together in one unit is insane and then they reverse element on top that is bizarre that is nuts with usg i feel like he's already down slightly just because he doesn't change his element so he's blue fair enough he does go type neutral when he transforms i mean not trans i said transforms when one person dies if another person dies um it's pretty much the same thing it, but it only happens twice but if two people die he gets a second ultimate which actually equates to probably what the androids can do damage wise the way I've put it up, in my head anyways, is that USG can have the same value as the androids, but in less cards. But he doesn't have the same amount of, like, disruption factors. So, when it comes to, like, um, losing your vanish, the consistent not cover changing is good with the green card as well of USG. Um, but with the androids, they just draw more cards anyways. And it's not like USG's damage is miles ahead outside of the fact that he has ultimate odds. So the Android would probably edge in that power, that, that level of strength as well. It's a very difficult way to measure. On top of the fact that I feel like USG is very strike oriented, where the Androids are just all over the place. No matter what card you're doing, they're going to do a lot of damage to you and it's going to hurt. USG, you might feel a little lackluster when you're doing blast arts. The strike arts really where he shines. The only other thing I could put up against the Androids is that USG draws blue cards every gauge fill. And that's for infinite times in a game. That is insane to me. Um, I'm not going to lie. And he destroys all your cards every blue. More valuable blue in my opinion. But just for the damage output. I feel like because of the current meta. Reds are also like very valuable right now. Uh, Mono Red is a team that's becoming very valuable. USG only is valuable simply because there is a lot of reds. And that is the highlight. MUI is the 4th anniversary. More than anything. Um, he was slightly starting to fade away. Simply because... Uh, the way the metal was working however he's come back because reds are popping now <laughs> so it's a very difficult measure i know i'm like bouncing back and forth there's probably writing on the left so you guys can see like a cleaner version of the breakdown but i just have to give it to the androids the switching is too nuts and the damage buildup is insane they can literally just take your vanish off one green i feel like the only downside is you see android 17's uh, green card with them his green card is a long animation if you don't know what that is that means that when he does the beam, if you vanish that and it's not even a perfect vanish, you can still hit him because the animation keeps him locked in that, locked in that position. And that could easily give you a free priority if the person mistimes it. Whereas uh, with 18, it's just a green card like, where it's like, they're like standing in position and that takes your vanish off rip for one time, like the first time in the game. That is insane. Like 18 is clear in my opinion, like by far. It also stops uh, cover changing. It's, it's just OP, man. I'm rambling on. You guys know the kits, but like putting up in comparison is the damage difference. And this is coming from a guy with Ultra Super Goji at 14 stars. I don't even have the androids, and I know what kind of damage they be doing. Reverse, reverse their colors. Yeah, they're putting people in blenders consistently. They can solo a whole game. Not to say USG can't, because Blast Arm is very valuable, and for how high I value it. But I feel like the boost, the featured boost, gives them that edge right now. And I feel like we might see a lot, of, a, a largely different result when uh, they come out of the featured boost. Kind of like how people have quote unquote said blue bros have fallen off. I wouldn't say they've fallen off. They're just not shining as much anyways. But that's another conversation. I feel like the androids would feel, uh, fall a similar fate. But their team will keep them very high up. But if we was to compare them to USG, it might be a different result. I'm not going to say for certain. And I'm not going to say simply because they're in the boost right now. That's the only reason they're above USG. But I will say 
that um, it is a factor that you have to consider and I can't just put USG above given the meta and how powerful the androids are alongside with their team. But yeah man, that's going to conclude the video. We got the androids in first place, we got Ultra Super Gogeta in second place, we got MUI Goku in third place. The rest doesn't matter but I believe at the top of my head, um, I'd probably put Cell over Blue Bros just simply because they work with the androids. Um, but I wouldn't put them fourth, I'd put them fifth and I'd put Kyle Ken in fourth because he also meshes well with um, MUI Goku, so for the team aspect as well. And the disruption that the Kyle Ken will apply to androids if they're not running MUI on, on some dumb leader slot stuff. But yeah man, let me know you guys' opinion on my best unit in the game and the order that I've put them in. I know I wasn't going to do an order, but I was already going down and I wanted to make it in a sense why I'm ticking them off one by one. So it just happened naturally. Um, there will be a part two to this video when Vegito Blue Zenkai returns. I mean, happens because I, I really don't want to be disappointed for that. <laughs> I think that's going to be a big deal. And if they fumble that, like they don't fumble Vigios, they don't. They don't. They really don't. So I'm not too worried. But Legends' of Zenkai track record is in the mud. I'll be so honest. So be on the lookout for that. I'm gonna leave it like that though. Appreciate you guys for watching the video. If you made it to the end, you're a real one for real. Press that subscribe button, man. We are on this grind to 30,000 subscribers. All my social media links are going to be on the bottom of the screen. This is the YouTube channel. We've got a Twitter, Twitch, Reddit, Instagram, and a Discord link all in the description below but yeah man making more good content for this fourth anniversary all the way through to the end of the year i'm gonna leave it like that my name is akashi guys i'll see you guys in the next one